untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white Invoke Justice deck updated with Dominaria United. Invoke Justice, the centerpiece of our deck, a 5-mana sorcery, returning a target permanent card from our graveyard to the battlefield, and then we get to distribute 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters among any number of creatures and or vehicles we control. So this can bring back any of our permanents, including our Sagas or Planeswalker, but of course the more exciting cards to bring back are Sanctuary Warden at 6 mana, and then the 7 mana Titan of Industry. These can both come down, stabilize the board by making additional tokens, a 1-1 one -one in the case of Warden, which can also draw additional cards, and then Titan of Industry making a 4-4 Rhino most of the time, can also put a shield counter somewhere, take out an artifact or enchantment, and or gain 5 life on a 7-7 with Reach and Trample. And then both of these creatures also incredibly powerful if we can ever copy them with a reflection of Kiki Jiki, as we can abuse their Enter the Battlefield ability. And Fables Chapter 2 can also help us discard some expensive cards like Titan and Sanctuary Warden to eventually bring back with Invoke Justice. And as if Fable weren't powerful enough, the Shaman token not only ramps us, but the Treasure tokens can also fix our mana to potentially hard cast a Titan of Industry, which doesn't happen very often, but we do have some Jetmere's Gardens in our mana base in combination with a Treasure tokens we can potentially cast the seven mana elemental and then we also have four copies of the Elder Dragon War, that's the new addition from Dominaria United. The saga can start from any chapter, so we can potentially deal two damage to each creature and each opponent, very powerful against any aggro strategies. Or we can start from chapter two, discarding any number of cards from our hand and then drawing that many. So another way to discard our expensive cards, and just in the late game maybe discard a bunch of extra lands or low impact cards to dig towards our Invoke Justice. And finally also makes a 4-4 Dragon token. And then taking a look at some cheaper cards, we've got four copies of Spirited Companion, just a 1-1 that when it enters draws a card, gives us an early play to spend our mana, and then can also maybe pick up some plus one counters from Invoke Justice, so we can attack with it right away, potentially even as a 5-5 if we put all the counters on it. Then we've got Cathartic Pyre as an early removal spell, dealing three to a creature or planeswalker, but we can also use it to discard up to two cards and then draw that many, so yet another discard effect. And then besides Fable of the Mirror Breaker, we also have Restoration of Iganja, which also has a ton of useful modes, starts by finding a planes to make sure we can cast or invoke justice, then on chapter 2 we can discard a card to bring back a permanent with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped, so that can help us ramp by just discarding a land and putting it in play, but we can also maybe use it as a discard outlet to discard Titan or Sanctuary Warden, and then we can also maybe bring back a Spirited Companion from the graveyard for free, and eventually transforms into the Architect, which can also help close out the game, and can maybe pick up some plus one plus one counters. And then at four mana, besides Elder Dragon War, we also have the Wandering Emperor, since we have our Pyre and the Elder Dragon War to deal with smaller creatures, and the Wandering Emperor can exile larger tapped creatures with the minus two, can gain some life back, and we can also bring it back with Invoke Justice as a powerful permanent, so that still works out. And then our main win conditions, of course, Sanctuary Warden and Titan of Industry. Then the mana base does need lots of red-white dual lands to make sure we can cast our war on turn four, as well as have the quadruple white for Invoke Justice, so can't afford to play too many mountains, just the one mountain and the one crucible. And then a ton of red-white duels, including Jetmere's Garden, which as we mentioned can also help cast Titan of Industry. Could go as far as to include some green-white dual lands to potentially hard cast Titan, but haven't really gone that far. And then the Crag enters tapped, gains one life. Sacred Peaks, another new dual land from Dominaria that enters tapped. And then of course Sundown Pass is the best one as it can come into play untapped. And then the utility lands, Crucible you could easily cut, but have been quite happy with Iganjo, especially against a mono blue deck as a potential answer to Hadi Jin, as it's not easy for the mono blue deck to interact with a channel land. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Hand has potential. Especially turn 3 Fable, always powerful in this deck. Can discard Titan. Pyre for interaction early on. Well, let's see what we're up against. It's gonna be black-white. So some sort of mid-range deck. Could be Esper, Legends, as we see blue mana as well. Don't think I need to Cathartic Pyre to discard when we have Fable. And it's going to be a cut down to deal with the Shaman, so nice cheap answer. 
3 mana for Rafine, which Pyre does not answer, sadly. Now discard Titan and maybe Cathartic Pyre, since I would rather just play another Fable here. Okay, at least we've got the Invoke Justice, just need mana. And I guess uh, Fable drawing two next turn gives us the best chance. Could see Shieldred, which would also punish us for drawing with Fable. And we'll discard Pyre and Companion, maybe. Alright, we found an untapped land. Now I do need to attack first to make a treasure to then potentially invoke justice. So we'll see if we get to attack. Now there's still the worry of potential counter spells. But uh, I think we still go for it. Get back Titan. Get some plus one counters. And our opponent's got an Interceptor to bounce that. Alright, fair enough. Can try again next turn. And we have a Reflection in play too now. Which can copy the Shaman or copy the Titan. Which would be the best case scenario. Put on discarding a land and a Token Maker. Okay, I'll take five. Wandering Emperor is one of the better ways to play around Interceptor since we can flash it in in the opponent's turn as well. Opponent going for Denik, which does say cards and graveyards can be the targets of spells or abilities, and a cut down while answering my reflection. So that was a pretty brutal turn. I could attack with my Shaman and then use Emperor to put a counter on it or Elder Dragon War to finish off Denik, but then we also lose reflection. So, I guess we still attack here, see what happens. And sure, we'll go for Emperor. And that'll soak up some damage from the Interceptor as well. And now we can at least invoke Justice again. And best case scenario, invoke and then still have the mana to copy Titan with a reflection here. Opponent's got two cards in hand. And Emperor is going to be dealt with here since I'm not interested in trading. Opponent discarded a Destroy Evil and a land. Gives us a tiny bit of extra information since they could have destroyed Reflection with Destroy Evil. Decided not to. And our opponent passes, so they likely have another Interceptor in hand, would be my guess. Can still copy the Shaman with Reflection. And then we're actually also able to hardcast Titan, but of course it also doesn't play well into an Interceptor. So then maybe we could double spell Restoration and Elder Dragon War. So let me start by copying the Shaman here, see what happens. Attack. opponent knows about or invoke justice so they could decide to let uh, smaller things slide just to keep an answer to invoke but I don't mind restoration get a planes and then can play a fable afterwards as well if we'd like or still play invoke with uh, extra mana but uh, don't mind Going for Fable, just to build up our mana. Okay. Well, that lets it go. And then next turn I might be able to cast Invoke Justice twice. Take seven. And a cut down answers reflection, sadly. 
Okay, so I'm definitely assuming our opponent has another uh, interceptor in hand. Can discard a rootbound crag, get back companion perhaps. Since we can maybe hard cast a titan. Finds another companion. And then do we want to discard anything? Elder Dragon War making a 4-4 doesn't really line up all that great on this board. And a 2 damage is also not really beneficial, so that can go, and maybe Companion can go as well. Okay, so try this main phase. Opponent plays Interceptor, I attack into it, and then we play it again second main. And get back Titan I think is still the best pick. Because if they somehow don't have Interceptor, we would get the counters to attack right now. There it is. And we'll attack. And invoke Justice again. And getting back Titan. Could also go for Wandering Emperor. Embarrassment of riches here. Okay, so plus one counters. We'll put on the small stuff since Titan's already large enough. And could maybe even see Shaman up to a 5 5. And then Rhino plus 5 life is maybe the safest. Don't really need shield counter. Opponent replays Denik. Doesn't have any good attacks, and yeah, now we can pretty easily take over. If our Shaman attacks, we can play another Titan, and we've got a Reflection ready to go. So, can I just move to combat, attack with all? Opponent packs it in, despite being at 27. They know they're just too far behind. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hands is quite strong if we can hit our land drops. Which uh, is easier said than done, but we do have Pyre plus maybe Elder Dragon War to help us with that as well. So we'll try it. And then maybe I have to discard one of them in order to hit my land drops. Which is a fine compromise. So right now, I guess a plan discard Titan, discard Invoke. Opponent on a red-green aggro deck, so at least we know what they're up to. Elder Dragon War could also be an effective sweeper and Emperor's useful interaction, so don't think we need to be too greedy here. Discard Invoke and Titan, and a single Invoke should be enough. Alright, so we've got our lands. Well, let's see what's next. Stormseeker, that one does not die to Elder Dragon War, but we could exile it with Emperor. So, if I Emperor, I won't be able to necessarily invoke Justice next turn, but Elder Dragon War will line up nicely dealing with Etching. So I think we main phase Emperor to keep it daytime, and then I'm fine if it soaks up a bit of damage. And then next turn we can Elder Dragon War tap land, turn after invoke, bringing back Titan, which is hopefully good enough. Raiju's good one. And now I guess the counter on etching means it doesn't die to Elder Dragon War. Could also just make a dragon if we'd like. Or now we can just invoke Justice. Bring back Titan. And then... I can put a shield counter on it, although Red-Green's not going to have an easy way of destroying it. So I could destroy the etching, make a Rhino, or we could gain 5, make a Rhino. Which is probably better. Alright. 11-11 Trample. Yeah, pretty tricky for Red-Green to get past. The best plan they have might involve partners and then just putting a ton of counters on their team as well. And yeah, there it is, so we're not out of the woods yet. 
but it's going to be a while before they can actually attack profitably. And in the meantime, we can Elder Dragon War to look for our next big play. So, sure. We'll discard our entire hand, I think. And there's a Sanctuary Warden and an Emperor. Both quite good. Don't think we're attacking. Even though we could try and turn it into a race, I don't see a reason to play that dangerously when we can make sure we win the late game. Now with Emperor in hand, I could see turning Titan sideways. Kumano deals one. Opponent fighting the good fight. Possible they have the uh, five damage instant in hand, Rending Flame, which they can maybe combine with their creatures to take out a Titan or a Rhino token. But uh, we'll see here. It's just going to be a Beast Caller. Okay. Counters on Beast Caller makes sense, but no attacks. And then now we can play our Sanctuary Warden if we'd like. Could attack with a Titan as well. Which I don't mind. Start closing out the game. And we should have plenty of blockers back to make sure we don't die. Remove a counter from Titan. Could have removed a shield counter too. Okay, opponent's at 9, another Sanctuary Warden ready to go. And it's not like our opponent really has any amazing attacks, especially considering they still need to keep something back on defense to make sure they don't die. Pack Leader will enter with two counters, thanks to Kumano. Raiju is 7-7. Can be trumped by a 1-1 one -one token. Could double block with our 4-4s, four run into a Rending Flame potentially. Let's just trump. And then Emperor could also exile it. Opponent is doing some math. There's a Rending Flame on the Dragon. And an Igunjo. All right, do we send Titan and Warden, or do we send all three? Ten Trample, five in the air, so let's say they don't jump with the partners, then they're at a virtual four life. They could triple block with the author creatures on Titan. Have to be careful with killing Beast Caller and the counters going on partners as well. But uh, yeah, I think it's relatively safe to uh, attack with everyone and remove a shield counter now. So right now we're trampling for 10. So that wouldn't work. But they really don't want to give up the partners. That much is clear. Okay, so this way they would survive, and even if I'm Wandering Emperor, I can only deal plus one damage, but I could Cathartic Pyre to remove the etching and then trample for enough. So now we're trampling for five, plus five more in the air. So don't even need Emperor. All right, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. We can play a Reflection on 3, which is always a big deal. And then we can play another 3-drop on the following turn. Play Guard in case we need to hard cast Titan of Industry. 
opponents looking like a mid-range deck, which uh, is probably a good place for our deck to be. We can struggle against hyper aggro, especially if they have Thalia. Opponents got a Guardian, which is somewhat surprising, but still happy to play Fable. And then, of course, counterspell heavy decks can also be difficult for us, since we're often trying to resolve some expensive spells. I guess there's also worlds where a Guardian is used as a discard outlet. Cut down answers the Shaman, sadly. But Fable's still providing a ton of advantage here. So what to discard? This turn I'm going for Restoration, want to keep my lands, so... Since we drew Invoke, I guess we can discard Sanctuary Warden, hope it doesn't get exiled from my graveyard. Restoration... Get a Plains, play a tap land. And then, uh, best case scenario, we'll have a Reflection of Kiki Jiki to copy Sanctuary Warden as well. This could be a turn for Shieldred, but opponent passes with 4 mana up. So there could be a counterspell in our future, which is a reason to just hang on to Wandering Emperor. For now, discard a lands, get back Companion, perhaps. And then I guess I don't mind passing with Wandering Emperor up. Which is also good at exiling the Guardian. And then maybe next turn I can both invoke Justice and activate Reflection in the same turn. Opponents get their own Wandering Emperor. Let's see what they do. Make a Samurai. Yeah, I think we pass here. Still with the plan of playing our own Wandering Emperor. And I'm fine if that maybe runs into a counterspell. Plus one counter on the Samurai. Safer target in case we have an Emperor to exile a tapped creature since the Samurai is vigilant. And our opponent playing around Emperor nicely here, not attacking with Guardian. That's fine, we'll take three. And it looks like they have removal here, Infernal Grasp. Okay, that works. So there goes our dream of copying our uh, angel. But I'm still gonna add to the board here with Emperor. Can also be brought back with Invoke Justice, but now we're just gonna make a Samurai. Okay. And seems like it's time for Invoke Justice here. Opponent's got two mana up. They could still have a counter spell, but it's less likely. The alternative would, I guess, be Fable plus Restoration, which isn't bad either, to be fair. And then I can put plus one counter on Samurai to attack into Wandering Emperor. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Uses my mana more efficiently in case there's a Make Disappear. That might be better. Opponent jumping and maybe discarding here with Guardian. Discarding another Emperor. Now it is tapped and I could exile it with another Emperor. Don't think that's our plan. So let's maybe bait with the Restoration. Although if they have a Make Disappear, we could pay for it. So they would have to sack a creature here, which is probably not happening. Play Fable and Restoration. We're maybe overextending into a Sweeper a little bit, but if they play a Sweeper, they will be tapped out. And then Invoke Justice is good to go. Opponent making another Samurai, so don't expect any board wipes. So we're also just slowly taking over without Invoke Justice. And uh, nothing exciting to discard, but I guess... We can just put a land in play. And I'll discard planes. Okay, so do we want to go for Invoke Justice? Yeah, I think that's okay. 
Try and get back Sanctuary Warden. And our opponent explodes. Alright, I guess I worked. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and is probably good enough. We can play turn 3 Fable, Restoration to hit my land drops. Although up against what could be Mono Blue, which is not my favorite matchup with this deck. And a turn 2 Lore Master. It's also very intriguing. And I guess we'll draw an additional card since we don't have a play lined up anyways. And just play a tap land. This card to hand size, maybe an Elder Dragon War can go. Or a Wandering Emperor, although against a blue deck I like the instant speed on Emperor. We can draw with a Lore Master and then still play it in the opponent's turn. So, this is going to be an interesting game with a Lore Master out. Don't typically see that one. Probably decline, try and play 3-drop, although it most likely gets countered. Should maybe make it Restoration instead of Fable if it's getting countered. Alright, that resolved. Still nice to ramp. And then next turn we can draw an extra card and flash an Emperor. Opponent's going for a Thirst. Yeah, if we didn't have Wandering Emperor, this uh, Lore Master would kind of be a disaster. I guess we also have the 2-mana instant to deal 3, which can answer it. But against a deck that's playing Sorcery Speed only, this card can be incredibly powerful when played early. And our opponent's got a fistful of cards here. They discarded a land to the Thirsts. And we'll draw an additional card. And then we can discard Garden, put that in play. And pass. And if our opponent draws, it's going to be more expensive to play counter spells in their turn as well. So that makes the Emperor doubly effective. And our opponent declines to draw the extra card, maybe exactly for that reason. Okay. I guess we'll play it now. Opponent negates. But at least it didn't draw an extra card this turn, and we can draw again with the Lore Master, try and play another Emperor. And a Tolarian Terror. Alright, 5-5 five, five can beat down pretty hard. Opponent is down to 1 mana. So, if we had an Invoke Justice, we could probably resolve it here. Sadly, we don't have one. So is it time to maybe double spell Fable plus Restoration? Yeah, I could buy that as well. Fable first in case of Spell Pierce. Although they might also have a Fading Hope to bounce a token. Alright, so now we've got a bit of a board presence at least. And the Emperor could be a nice answer to Tolarian Terror. Opponent bouncing. Now Restoration, at least it generated a bit of value. But the Lore Master is putting an interesting twist on this game. Declines to draw, so they're planning to cast something in their turn. Fading Hope to bounce their Shaman. Okay, so we're on a two-turn clock. And I don't have anything relevant to get back with Restoration. So yeah, this could be bad. Another Tolarian Terror. Well, if their last two cards have more counter spells, we're probably dead. Well, it's not like I can significantly double spell here, since Restoration doesn't impact the board. Um, so I might as well draw, maybe find a Cathartic Pyre or something. Discard Garden to get back. And Fable can loot, discarding lands and maybe Restoration. 
at this point. Find a Titan, which we could technically cast next turn. But yeah, it's not looking good here. Can only flash in one Emperor. And our opponent probably has an answer at the ready. Opponent draws, since they can easily cast a Counterspell with the increased cost. And yeah, dissipates, leaving one mana. Alright, so a very interesting game with a turn to Loremaster. Thought we had a chance with Wandering Emperor, but the Tolarian Terror came at the right time. So well played to our opponent. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's a little slow with two tap lands, but it has a ton of potential here with Fable and Elder Dragon to discard, even Restoration, to make sure we hit our land drops, and then Invoke Justice to hopefully get something powerful back. And being on the play also makes these tap lands less painful, although an early Evolved Sleeper can be quite scary. So opponent on black aggro. Best case scenario, it stays small until we can wipe it away with uh, Elder Dragon War. Opponent blue-black, in fact, so counter spells could also complicate matters now. And opponent actually a ninja deck. All right, that was an unexpected twist. Prosperous Thief makes a treasure. They could replace Sleeper if they want. They decide not to. Well, good news is this Elder Dragon War could be quite effective. And we have to decide between Fable and Restoration. I think Restoration makes more sense, since then if we deal two, at least we don't kill our own Shaman token. And we're more likely to be able to curve out. Opponent could have some ninjas to take a look at our hand as well. Master does not save against the two damage, since the Master would die and then the Thief would die afterwards. But opponent could have some counter spells as well. Well, if they don't have a counter spell, this is going to be pretty brutal. I'll uh, discard Companion, bring it back since we don't have anything else, since I want to keep the land to actually play. Although the Companion will sadly perish here to our own Elder Dragon War. Could also play around a counter spell by flashing an Emperor in the opponent's turn, but I don't think that's worth it here. And yeah, that resolves. Start from chapter 1. Wipe the board. Leveling up Sleeper doesn't quite do it. So now we're in a great position. Can keep discarding with uh, Elder Dragon War to set up our Invoke Justice. And another Evolved Sleeper. That we can maybe kill with Cathartic Pyre. There's a Biting Palm Ninja, which they might have been able to Ninjutsu last turn to take away our Sweeper. So what to discard here? This turn we could go Restoration plus Pyre. And then maybe discard a Wandering Emperor. Pretty happy with most of my cards to be honest. Although we could dig for a big payoff to reanimate with Invoke. But one Emperor can go. Find another Invoke. Now we have to be careful with the timing on Cathartic Pyre, since it could ninjutsu if we don't declare any blockers. But I could Pyre before they actually get a chance to ninjutsu. Just want to make sure we don't go past the blockers phase. Both attack. They can level up Sleeper several times. So let's see. So... Yeah, with the treasures... They could level it up up to a 4-4. Four, four. But then I could Pyre the Sleeper. And then maybe it's fine if the Ninja takes something away. Since we have double Invoke Justice anyway. Sure. So we'll block Sleeper. And see what their response is. And then we'll wait for them to level up all the way. Before we Pyre. Okay, that's one. That's two. And respond to the final one. And I hope their last card is not a protection spell. It is not. 
opponent does get to hit us with a Binding Palm. But at least we wasted their entire turn. Invoke Justice is probably still their best bet. Now I'm just going to main phase it, I think. Can discard another companion, bring it back. And distribute some counters, bring back Wandering Emperor. Can exile the ninja. And this seems fine. Okay. Alright, good game. We got to see our Elder Dragon War shine in this game, dealing two damage, helping us sculpt our hand, and eventually making a dragon as well. Sweet, and we get to level up as well here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and has quite a bit of potential if we find Invoke Justice. But uh, yeah, I'll try it. Turn to Pyre for either removal, or we can use it for looting. Although, better to loot with Elder Dragon War if we get the chance, as it doesn't actually cost us a card. So they can keep Companion, put onto a Green-White Enchantment deck. Could be a tough matchup, although Titan, especially if we get it going with a Reflection of Kiki-Jiki, could help us deal with a bunch of enchantments. And then next turn I could also discard Titan with Restoration, but might be better off discarding a Planes to put in play. And then we'll see if we need to start from Chapter 1 or 2. Chapter 1 looking good now. And a Fable as well. So sure, we'll discard Planes. Put it in play to ramp. And wipe the board. Opponent could exile the Saga as well, if they have a Borrow time, for instance. It's gonna be Hallowed Haunting, so opponent's gonna go big. Alright, let's discard a bunch of cards. And uh, hopefully find our Invoke Justice. Probably keep Emperor in hand, although I could see just discarding everything but Fable to give us the best chance of finding Invoke, since Emperor's not gonna be at its best with our opponent not having any creatures in play yet. No Invoke, sadly, but we can play Fable plus Restoration if we get a Planes. And then next turn we get to draw two again. So yeah, we could have probably put this game away had we spiked an Invoke. Now our opponent still has a chance to recover. Naturalist to discount their enchantments, yep. With another Jetmere's Garden and Treasure Tokens potentially, we could also Hardcast Titan if we draw it. So we'll keep that in mind. And then the Dream is still to get our Reflection going. But our opponent can likely answer it eventually. Wedding Announcements, yep. And find a Companion. Okay. So a bunch of triggers on the stack. I think I discard Companion to draw. Start there. And then discard Mountain plus Crag. Still nothing, although an Elder Dragon War dealing two damage looks pretty good here. So, do I want to attack first to make a treasure? I would potentially lose Architect if they block it as a problem. How likely are they to do so? I could also flash an Emperor if that's the case. So I think I'm fine to attack with both. And then depending on the situation, we either Emperor for a plus one counter or Elder Dragon War second main to blow up the board. Opponent lets damage happen. So let's wipe the board here. And then do I play out Garden? That's probably reasonable. Again, in case we draw Titan. And then next turn we can maybe discard Emperor plus Planes. Opponent's at 11, so 
Yeah, there's a chance we can get there without Invoke Justice, but Sarah Paragon gets back Naturalist here. So our opponent's got a uh, late game taken care of. And there's Titan, which we can now hard cast. And with a reflection of Kiki Jiki, that's gonna be incredibly powerful. So it's still happy discarding planes and Emperor. There's the Invoke as well. I guess that's more powerful, although less mana efficient. So maybe Titan Hardcast is still the play for now. Deal with the Hallowed Haunting. And uh, Shield Counter doesn't matter against enchantments, so I guess we'll go for Rhino Token. Okay, and then keep land in hand, I guess. Can attack for four. And then they need to answer Reflection. If they do, we still have an Invoke for another Titan coming up. Opponent's down to seven as well, so time is running out. Upside of Invoke last turn is that we get some extra counters to maybe set up a big attack. Borrow time. Could just go for Titan instead of Reflection, but opponent does go for the Reflection, so Invoke Justice for another Titan. Could blow up the Borrowed time, although I guess uh, our opponent can just get it back with Paragon. Naturalist attacks. I guess we'll triple block here. So we don't lose Titan. Make some 1-1s. One Opponent just desperate to gain some life back, I'm sure. And there's another Invoke Justice. Can't quite cast both of them, but we'll start with one. Getting back our Titan of Industry. And then at least one counter on the Dragon. We'll put two on the Architect. Maybe one on the Rhino, so that can also attack this turn. And then destroy Artifact or Enchantment. And uh, make a Rhino, I think. Blowing up the Borrowed Time. They can replay it next turn, but so be it. Or we can destroy the Wedding Announcements to shrink down their team. And set up a bigger attack. And our opponent finally throws in the towel, but they definitely put up a good fight. So yeah, we got to see our Invoke Justice deck in action. And overall, it has pretty good matchups against most of the creature decks in the meta right now. Especially if they don't involve a turn to Thalia, which is one of the better ways to punish our strategy. And then against the mid-range decks, we definitely have a chance. It's going to be a pretty interactive game most of the time. Against the mono blue deck, that's the one that's been giving me the most uh, trouble playing this deck. Just because they tend to have lots of cheap counter spells to counter or 5-6 mana plays. And that's not really a matchup you're likely to win. But of course, you can always get lucky. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.